Hi, my name is Chris Lehman. I am the founding principal of Science Leadership Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, SLA is uh, an inquiry-driven, uh, project-based school with a focus on modern learning. All of the learning that we do here at SLA uh, is centered around our five core values. Inquiry, what are the questions we can ask? Research, how do we find answers to those questions? Collaboration, how do we make those answers deeper, richer, better? Presentation, how do we show what we know? And reflection, how do we step back and learn from what we've done? That, uh, that iterative process of learning is what creates a really vibrant and really active and empowering education that allow kids to tackle real problems in the world today and craft solutions that are meaningful and relevant and powerful to their lives. So we're a one-to-one -one laptop school. We have been since our inception. Um, and our sense about technology is really that technology needs to be like oxygen, ubiquitous, necessary, and invisible. It's got to be everywhere. It's got to be part of everything you do. And then you've got to stop talking about it so much. Uh, you'll, you won't see at SLA, for example, uh, teachers assigning a blog project. They'll assign a project that's about something and whatever the blog or the Prezi or the social media or the what have you, whatever the um, tools, the technolo technological tools necessary to accomplish the task are, we're going to do that. Uh, what technology allows us to do in really powerful ways, it allows kids to see the world of their learning as far beyond the four walls of the classroom. What it allows them to do is seek out expert voices in the world, craft meaningful artifacts of their own learning, and then share that those artifacts with the world in really, really powerful ways, in ways that wasn't really possible before. So now there's no reason to assume that something that a child does only has to be a dialogue between student and teacher. Rather, what kids can do today is, is uh, create artifacts of learning that are, again, that, that the dialogue is between student and world. And that's a really powerful thing, and that's different, and that's new. It also allows them to, again, reach out to people and to expertise and to knowledge far beyond their classroom walls. We don't have to pretend that everything a child learns can be contained in the head of a, child, in the head of a teacher anymore. We can really create and craft uh, learning experiences for kids that um, allow them access to the rest of the world and not just through sort of static research, you know, research of a static page, but rather expert knowledge and what have you, um, they can be active researchers. They can be active creators. They can be active networkers in ways that build on what happened before the technology but are really transformed by the technology. Um, well, so, I, I mean, there's any number of examples. Um, one of my favorites is several years ago we worked with an organization called Engineers Without Borders and our kids actually in their engineering classes designed a solar thermal water heater uh, that Engineers Without Borders actually took their project and the actual physical thing the kids made and installed it in a hospital for amputee victims in Sierra Leone and what our kids built was being used to boil water in a portable hospital um, so that way they could uh, they could sterilize instruments, doctors could wash their hands, what have you, uh, and make sure there was a more sterile environment for the surgeries that was going on. That's an example of kids designing something um, that is incredibly powerful uh, and leveraging all of the tools at their disposal to do so. Another great example uh, that is one of really one of my favorite ones is several years ago, kids were investigating um, issues of youth culture around America. And they discovered that in Dallas, um, the deputy mayor of Dallas had launched this major campaign to get teenagers to pull their pants up. Right, as you all know, like the baggy shorts and what have you kind of phenomena where kids will let their underwear hang out and whatever, or whatever. And so there was literally a hundred thousand, you know, multi hundred thousand dollar campaign, uh, kids to pull up their pants. There were billboards, there were uh, commercials on the radio, public service announcements, what have you. And so our kids reached out to the deputy mayor and said, we're, you know, the students of the Science Leadership Academy, we're investigating this, we're looking at issues of youth culture and interaction in the larger culture, we'd like to interview you. And so they actually did a Skype call with the deputy mayor of, of Dallas and really grilled him for about a half an hour on why this was an important campaign, why was he doing it, what was he thinking about that, what does it mean to be spending public funds on this stuff, you know, what have you. Really wonderful free-flowing uh, conversation and to the deputy mayor's credit, he was wonderful and answered all of our kids' questions. Um, but there was this really powerful moment where he actually asked to get taken off of the speakers and he wanted to speak just to the teacher. And, and he said to the teacher, which we then told the class with his permission, 
And he said, you know, if we had a journalistic core as, as persistent and as thoughtful as your students, we'd have a better Dallas, which is a really powerful thing. And it was very powerful for, for our kids to see themselves as active agents and as real journalists in the world um, and researchers. And that's the kind of thing where we can bring the world to bear. People, we can as, you know, there's nothing that prevents a 16-year-old in today's day and age from asking to do that kind of active research with people from all over the world. And that's a really powerful thing. Another great project that happened a number of years ago uh, with the last election, last presidential election, excuse me, excuse me, this was um, two presidential elections ago, so it was the 2008 election, is we had a sister school that we worked with in Texas. And on election day, their kids went out and our kids went out and took photos and did interviews right on the spot during election day of the different senses of that election, the McCain versus Obama election. Um, and then we posted all of those to Flickr and to a couple other different sites and had the kids do sort of an ethnography and a sort of gallery walk of the different ways that that election was um, viewed in this little tiny town in rural Texas and in Philadelphia, which obviously votes about 90% Democratic and Texas did not. And it gave these kids this wonderful worldview of difference in the idea that not everybody felt about the election the way that they did. And it was this incredible, incredible project and, and was eye-opening to many, many kids. And there's just dozens upon dozens of examples of that, um, that when you let kids have access to the world, that's what they can do. Well, I mean, I think number one, um, don't assume that school is contained by four walls and floor. Understand that the world is our learning environment today. Uh, number two, um, don't don't not do something just because you're afraid of the of of what you can control, right? You can support or you can control. Rarely do you get the chance to do both, and we always choose to support here as opposed to try and control. Um, don't assume you know every outcome. Don't assume that you know what will happen if. You don't. We don't. And that's OK. That's actually a feature, not a bug. Um, immerse yourself in enough of the technology to, eat to you don't have to be more expert than the kids or more expert than your teachers, because you won't be. But immerse yourself enough in the technology that you're not scared of it. Um, and then I think the other thing is, is that don't just use technology for the sake of using technology. Again, it's about. What is the technology in service of? If, if you believe in student empowerment, if you believe in the notion of being a fully active agent and citizen in the, of the world, um, and then you ask of your educators that they are thoughtful in the creation of curriculum that enables that and that empowers that and then dares kids to sort of occupy that space, I guess, uh, great things will happen. But if the answer is, I want kids to use technology so that way I can make sure they can pass the test, or every kid will have the exact same set of skills, or what have you, um, you're going to miss the opportunity for that authentic uh, learning experience. So you've got to be intentional in its use, intentional in the time that it takes, and intentional in the idea that you don't have all the answers, and that it leads to an outcome of global citizenship um, as much or more than it leads to an outcome of, I can guarantee that they will all have this exact set of skills and content in their heads.